Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and uh, I want to teach you a little bit about JavaScript documentation today. So, I have always been kind of lacking in my documentation. I um, usually just kind of code and try to make it as clear as possible, and then only really get to the documentation at the end, only if I really have time and there's nothing else to do. But recently, I found out about something called JS Doc that's been out for a long time. I just never really came across it. Uh, but it makes JavaScript documentation, in my mind, a whole lot easier. So I thought I'd share it with you. I've been using it at work now uh, for a couple of, maybe like two weeks. So I'm still pretty new at it, but I think it's useful, especially for functions. So I have some very basic functions that I just want to show you how to use it. And uh, I'll put a link to the documentation for JS Doc so you can learn more. There's a lot more you can do with it, uh, but if you just start doing this with your code, it's it's going to be so much more well documented. And with these simple functions, it may seem like, whoa, do I really need to document these? But the idea is, if you get more complex functions, then it would help a lot more. So. Um, the ideas are simple so that if you're newer to JavaScript, you'll be able to understand like that uh, what's happening with these functions. I didn't want to confuse anybody with the functions themselves, uh, but uh, just try to imagine what this could do for functions that were maybe uh, you know very long complex functions. It'll it'll help a lot. So if you're using uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, which which I am. You're going to get a little bit of help with this because it'll automatically scaffold out some of your documentation for you. All you have to do is hit this slash. I can't remember whether it's forward or backslash, but the one that like leans to the to the right. Okay, you hit the slash and then you hit this little star symbol. Where is it at? So you're going to hit the double star and it's going to come up to auto complete this JS doc comment for you and you hit enter. And then now it actually gives you the syntax, which is, is simply this little slash and then uh, two little, this is, it's an asterisk, right? I called it a star, but I guess technically it's an asterisk. So two of them. And then every line after that is just starts with another asterisk. And then you end with one asterisk and a slash, the same type of slash right after that. You can put whatever you want in between here in terms of explanation, but there are some like key words that start with the, the at symbol, right? So our parameters for our function, which get automatically put in here by VS Code, are going to be whatever the parameters are for your function. In this case, I just named them num1 and num2. Okay. Now, above that is where you want to write the uh, description of what your function does. So... You can actually give your function a name if you want with the at name, but I usually don't bother with that because if you name your function for what it does, then you shouldn't really need a name, right? If, if the name of your function is what, what it did. And I'm using uh, arrow functions just so it's less less code on the screen there. If you're not familiar with arrow functions, uh, it's, it's part of ES6 or ES2015. Uh, basically, it's just Anything on this side of the arrow function gets automatically returned. Okay, so this is the, you know, the body of the function. Uh, and this is the name of our function here. So our function is called add. So I'm not going to add a, a name in here, but I could explain it. I could say this function um, adds two numbers together. Okay. And for our parameters, we can actually give these a type. Now, JavaScript doesn't really have types by default. You can use TypeScript, which I'm not going to go into TypeScript in this video, but I might do another video about TypeScript. I really like to use this together with TypeScript uh, because if you make custom types in TypeScript, you can use them as types in your, uh, your JS docs. But maybe that's for another video. Uh, but for now, we'll just stick with the basic type of number. And we're going to add that in. And the syntax is just like you see, these little curly brackets in between the param and the name. And then after that, you can put a space and you can put anything you want. So you could just call this 
first number. And this, let's call it second number. Now, I'm going to hit enter to add another line. And we have another keyword here, and we could say returns. Okay, now this will tell whoever's looking at this function what we return. And um, you could say returns uh, sum of first and second number. And I believe we can give the return a type as well. And it's also going to be a number. So now when I hover over this function, no matter where I'm at in the file, so let's say down here I want to call add, right? I can look at it. So we could import this to anywhere in the application, right? And a user is not going to have to come back here and see what this function does. They can just highlight this and they'll get the description. Right, and remember, this is in Visual Studio Code, right? So if you use a different code editor, check to see if your code editor does this by default, or you might need to install a plugin to have this, this work. Um, but right now we can see, all right, what does this function do? It adds two numbers together. So I, I didn't say numbers. <laughs> uh, it takes two parameters, the first number and the second number. And then what should I expect to get a uh, return? The sum of first and second number. And it looks like, am I not seeing the types? All right, unfortunately, it's not showing the uh, the types uh, in the tooltip, right? But uh, if we were using TypeScript, I suppose we would get it up here. But we should know <laughs> from the description that we gave it that we're expecting numbers, first number, second number, right? And um, that's that's like pretty much the most basic. If our function didn't return anything, we wouldn't have to add a return. If our function didn't take any parameters, we wouldn't have any parameters. We could just do a description. If our function was, let's say, an asynchronous function, we could add async to let someone know that Hey, this is an async function. It's not, so we're going to take that away. Okay. But there's a lot of other things you could put on here. Uh, so um, you know, check out the docs, which I'll link uh, in the in the description to the video for more. And let's I want to do one more just to kind of make sure we all get the hang of this. This one's a little bit different. Um, we're taking uh, name and age. And this one is called intro. So it's not exactly obvious what this function does from the name. Not as obvious as add. That's going to bother me. I need to add the S. Add two numbers together. So this one would be kind of a better candidate for more of an explanation. So we could say um, this intro function, the purpose is to create... It creates a string. Uh, introducing. Okay, maybe you could come up with a better, better intro than that. Um, but we could say our name. Here is uh, a string, right? And let's say we could specify maybe that we want the um, I don't know, the first name. Okay. In our age, we could let's say number for age. Now, uh, JavaScript should it be fine with that, that we're going to just throw a number in the middle of this string, and it'll, it'll print it as a string. And we could put age here, right? It, it's really obvious. Sometimes it's not as obvious. In this case, it is. So you maybe don't necessarily even need to add a description there if it's so obvious. Okay. And then we're going to have a return. And then it returns... And for returns, we could put 
a um, we could put an example so it could be very explicit as to what this is going to return um, we could say returns um, the following string and we could say my name is and name and I am years old. Now if we do it like this, when we hover over this, we can see exactly what we're going to get if we use this function. Okay, so that's a little bit more useful, right? But that's basically what you would use to put a little bit of documentation into your code. Now, this isn't the only thing you can do, right? JS doc can be installed as a command line tool, and then you can run it and actually get all this documentation converted into like an HTML file or a markdown file, uh, and then all your documentation like in a very clean looking format so somebody could browse through it without having to actually look at your code they could just browse through a nice website that would look like a normal documentation website and you don't actually have to write it yourself it gets auto generated right so I'm not gonna go into that in this video uh, because basically that's just a matter of running whatever command JS doc says to run so it's not uh, really too difficult and uh, to be honest with my own projects unless it's going to be a like a public project I don't necessarily bother with making the uh, HTML version of the documentation uh, it just kind of depends on the circumstances uh, because you know having the ability to just hover over this and get the info right there is, is pretty useful just in and of itself or if somebody needs to go back and edit the code being able to see all this is also very useful and these are very small but I've seen these before where there's a ton of information in here where they'll document step by step exactly what the function is doing uh, so don't be afraid to put a lot of info in here if you have a complex function right the more information uh, the better uh, you know imagine somebody's looking at your code for the very first time and you know they have no idea what this function is doing uh, so that's basically my advice is don't assume that the reader has any knowledge of, of what you're trying to do with your code. Uh, and then you'll be safe later on uh, if somebody's looking at your code and um, it'll just, it'll help them to be able to get right into your code and change what they need to change uh, more quickly than they normally would if they had to actually go through each line of code to figure things out. Okay. So, uh, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if this is something that you are interested in, I could do more videos on it. I could do a demonstration of, you know, maybe s different different things in JavaScript and how you would document those. We could do a run through of how to do it with TypeScript. Um, we could do some more complex functions and see like how would I document something that had, you know, a, a lot going on. Uh, so. Like I said, I'm, I'm somewhat new to this, but I have been using it uh, for for work, uh, for some pretty complex code. Um, go, currently going through a, a pretty large project and, uh, and putting documentation into um, all kind of the most complex parts of the project. Uh, so I'm happy to share what I've learned. And um, yeah, so I'd love to, to hear your feedback on this. And uh, if you all have any advice, if you've been using uh, something for documentation uh, definitely open to uh, uh, to any um, techniques that that you all have used as well uh, feel free to ask me any questions you can put them down in the comments or uh, check out my the links to my social media stuff and you know you could dm me um, i've also been doing live streams some react native live streams for the free code camp youtube channel so uh, you could check those out i've done a few uh recently and i'm going to keep doing some of those as well i'm going to try maybe to alternate between live streams and videos 
uh, and do a nice mix of them. So um, if you're interested in React Native, uh, check those out. I'm going to stick to the short tutorial videos on my channel for now. Um, but uh, let me know what else you want me to do. I got a list of, uh, of videos that I'd like to do tutorials for, uh, but I definitely love to hear what you all want, and I'd much prefer to make a video about what you want to hear. Uh, so yeah, until next time, uh, have a great day, and uh, good luck with your JavaScript documentation.